hello all this is the solution video to assignment 2 that is week 2 assignment of nptel c programming and assembly language course 2023 let's start off with the first and second questions we are given certain values of variables and then assembly code and we are asked to uh, come up with in question 1 what the expression is that this code is trying to calculate and question 2 what value will be there EAX at the execution of statement uh, 11 right after the execution so you can pause the video at this point and see how the values of the registers EAX and EBX are affected by the respective variables and the respective statements over here uh, but at the end you will find that the expression is so right this means or and uh, a b or you can say a and b this is and right and this is xor right so that is the answer to question one and if you were to plug in the values of x y a and b into the expression uh, you can work it out that the answer will come out to be 2 which is the answer to question 2 and uh, finally in question 3 uh, it asks if we include uh, the following statement uh, move ebx comma so and so and then do mul ebx we know that ebx is 2 so mul ebx uh, is just multiplying this numbers uh, 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 0 x fff fff by 2 which is a left shift and that the results will go in edx uh, and eax and it will be so right so the question number 3 is answer what value will the register edx bear is 1 right here you can see the solution to question 3 uh, implemented in visual studio right so you can see the code on the left right and in the end i have just moved the value of the edx register into uh, an variable called c and then i am printing it over here right and that print comes out as the following three following two statements right what i've highlighted here you can see that edx is equal to one is printed right so first let's look at question number four and six right so in question number four we uh, so we are first given uh, uh, for uh, we are first given uh, uh, an assembly program which I have given over here so you can see this is question 4 and also question 6 right so we have this assembly program right the uh, point is every time you uh, run this program uh, and you reach this JNZ the value of the accumulator will be updated with the next Fibonacci number so Fibonacci series is like your you got your 0 1 and then you know, plus 1 is 1 and then 1 plus 1 is 2 and then 1 plus 2 is 2 this is Fibonacci series right so the nth Fibonacci number is what this uh, series is meant to calculate right and uh, so for the value of n equal to 9 you will get the uh, Fibonacci uh, of 34 and here I'm printing at the end what the value of uh, Fn is where Fn is the value of the accumulator after the program finishes uh, right and uh, you can see that the value for question 4 is 34 which is the configured answer right and uh, just moving to question 6 for a moment we'll come to question 5 in the in the next uh, after this 
right uh, if you gen if you take n to be fn now right so fn comes out to be 34 here and now if you take you, you want to find the fibonacci 34 right uh, you go through the same program right and uh, this prints out the value of fn right and that print statement comes out over here as the following value right which is the configured answer for question 6 right yeah so that was question five, six, uh, 4 and 6 now for question 5 so question 5 is interesting we are asked to assume a 32 bit uh, processor right so you are go we are going up to e all the extended registers so it's a 32 32 bit system 32 bit processor right what is the largest value that you can assign to n right that is what is that largest fibonacci number that you can calculate within this uh, system such that this program does not overflow uh, the accumulator right uh, in statement 9 right so statement 9 in this program is basically the add eax comma ebx right if you refer to the assignment uh, this is statement 9 right the one that has the label for it and uh, basically this just comes from the uh, you first have to find out now if you have 32 bits right here you can I, each f is basically 4 bits right 1 1 1 1 and I have 8 f's so that's 32 bits so in the windows calculator you can put in 8 f's and you'll find that the value the decimal value corresponding to this uh, is so and so so that will be the largest number that you can have in 32 bits uh, that you can represent right it will if, if you're looking at unsigned representation it can it can go from 0 till uh, it can go from 0 uh, from 0 till this number in decimal right uh, yeah so then uh, we have to see how high we can take fibonacci uh, how high fibonacci numbers can go such that the next fibonacci number is greater than this guy and the previous one is less than this guy right so that from matlab you can see I, I, in matlab i have just uh, I, through trial and error i found out that it was fibonacci of 47 is 29 whatever that number is and fibonacci of 48 is 48 so the, importantly this number is higher than uh, 0x uh, ff ff right what we just saw importantly this number is uh, higher than that right right so this is greater than this uh, and uh, therefore you can only go up till fibonacci of 47 and uh, yeah so if you put fibonacci so if you put n equal to like so now coming back to the code code example if you put n equal to 47 and then uh, print the value of n and fn right you will see the uh, print statements for question number 5 here like so right so that's how high you can take it with a 32 bit uh, system right so now question number uh, 7 actually from question number 7 to question number 9 uh, we are given this uh, uh, we, we are given this program uh, uh, optimized one function called optimize and we are asked to find out uh, if uh, the compiler is you know compiled with maximum optimization uh, if the program is compiled with maximum optimization what what which statements get compiled and which statements don't get compiled so question number seven the answer is uh, that the questions uh, the statements that don't get compiled are only statement 5 so you can see that statement 3 has a like this blue color over here is the highlighted compiled equivalent of the uh, of the highlighted statement here right so you can see that question number three the statement 3 gets compiled right here i've highlighted statement 4 and it's also getting compiled statement 5 i've highlighted but you can see there is no blue over here right so therefore it doesn't get compiled and finally statement 6 uh, I'm sorry uh, statement 6 not finally this is statement 6 and then you got your statement 7 which is the return statement right uh, yeah that uh, that also gets compiled so you have the uh, you have the compilation for all statements except statement 5 yeah and uh, so that's what the answer to question number 7 is 
uh, only statement 5. So in question 8, you can see that if statement number 4 is changed to uh, a equal to s plus z, right? This is statement 4. And if statement 6 is changed to r equal to a minus s, right? Uh, which is the change that I'm highlighting here. Uh, which of the following statements, uh, you know, do not get compiled, right? So let's look at it. Uh, so the correct answer for this question, you can see if I uh, 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 if I have these as the changes, all right? The compiled code over here has only the uh, f uh, following. Uh, 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 it only has the following compiled assembly code right and uh, which points to return r right uh, right because that, that makes sense right so basically s is equal to uh, z minus y a equal to s plus z right so uh, uh, a equal to s plus z but s itself is z minus y right plus z this is now a and then r equal to a minus s right uh, a minus s is just z sorry a equal to sorry yeah just r equal to uh, a minus s and if you just substitute for uh, you know a here which is s plus z minus s uh, minus s we get r is equal to s uh, equal to z right so the answer is r is equal to z which is just what gets compiled and no other statements get compiled so the correct answer is that the uh, only only statement uh, uh, 7 gets uh, compiled right so and similarly when we say return x also uh, the uh, like you can see over here only uh, uh, when i highlight so yeah uh, when, when i highlight the compiled assembly statement right only return x with the statement 7 gets compiled so it's the same answer for this number 9 now moving to question 10 basically both p a and p b are float types and therefore they are both 4 bytes and that's the answer here so question number 11 is uh, self-explanatory uh, right so i'm not going to go into that right uh, which is the purpose of the assembly statement 3 right it's just to uh, right it's just to load the register ECX with the address of the variable PA so that is question 11 so you can see for C statement 4 which is highlighted over here the relevant commands are the following right 3 4 5 and three four five six seven uh, here in question 13 you can see that i've highlighted statement five and uh, you know nothing gets highlighted over here so in this question the, there is no statement that this particular c code gets compiled to and we uh, uh, uh right so therefore this question is uh, incorrectly configured and can be removed in question 14 right the code is over here the code that's calling rln fun is here and this is the function that is in rln fun right and uh, you can see the print statement for question 14 over here and this is as per the configured answer uh, for the question 14 which is uh, len equal to 2 now question 16 right uh, uh, and again uh, uh, and uh, question 16 is so uh, question 15 uh, uh, actually refers to statement uh, 10 of the compiled assembly not statement 5 uh, so the question is incorrectly configured but you can see that the change is actually that it becomes a uh, word pointer right but uh, since the question was incorrectly configured it will be uh, it will be removed yeah 
so next uh, question 16 right so again it is uh, uh, it is a, it's a swap function but it's called by value here right so you might recall in your c code that call by values when the function value is passed to the uh, to the uh, to, uh, the variable values are passed to the function as opposed to the pointer to the variables and so the uh, function the the callee vari variables are not affected right and because of which uh, you can see that uh, the answer to question 16 uh, it's basically printing the same values right you can see the code over here right it's basically printing the same values that were sent so there is no swap that happened right so that is and uh, you can also look at questions uh, of uh, 17 and 18 and the answer will just be a equal to 60 b equal to 160 right because it's called by uh, value right because it's called by value so that also answers question uh, 17 and uh, 18 right uh, then we have question 19 right this is uh, called by reference but only but the function the swap function uh, doesn't perform correctly right uh, so this is the the incorrect swap function with call by reference right so if you execute this here is the code that's calling it right if you execute it the uh, print statement comes out to be 60 comma 60 so this is the configured answer for question 19.